Lord Jesus. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. There is nothing.
Going to hunt as we home it unto him. Coming unto him. 
Cristo. Your hands to heaven and hum it unto him. And I, John, saw he that sat upon the throne with a book written within and outside, but sealed seven times. And I looked, and behold, there was none in the heavens and on earth that had the capacity to loosen the seal. I wept, says John. But I heard a voice that says, weep not. For someone has prevailed to open the book. And when I looked and I saw a lamp as though that was slain. Came out from among God. And stepped forward to take the book. And all heavens began to worship he that took the book from the hand that sat upon the throne. Hallelujah. 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 see him on the throne. It's a mind travel. I meditate on his splendor, his grandeur, magnanimity, power, and strength. Let your mind see him in glory.
Almighty who sits on his throne laughing at the conspirators. The God that activates increase. Apostle Paul knew you and he said, I planted an Ap Apollo water. But none of the two of us have the capacity to produce increase. He said, but you, God, give it the increase. Oh, God, that give it the increase. Gagagwa. He said, the Lord shall increase you more and more. The God that give it increase. Please help me for one minute. Just celebrate. The God that give it increase. 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 Go ahead. Celebrate him. The God that give it increase. Jesus. Please have your seat. Let me quickly begin the school of the spirit with the protocol of worship. The school of the spirit is an inspiration that was not planned. It's a message delivered from heaven that was not initiated by the preacher. It wasn't initiated by the preacher. It's a spontaneous flow of utterance by the spirit. It's called the school of the spirit. It can be, almost become like a full message. But you will know by the ordering and the sequence and the flow. Downloading references that was not documented before the message started. It's more important than the prepared message. So we are now in that atmosphere called the school of the spirit. He said, let he that has ear hear, not what the spirit said, but what he's saying now. So the Holy Ghost spoke before, but he's always speaking. And I sense that he's saying now that I should speak on the protocol of worship. Why? Because of the value of worship. Time will not permit us to go into the benefit of worship. Time will not permit us. But you know, worship provokes increase. Am I right? In the book of Psalm 67, Verse 5, be fast, my son. You know, I don't like slow readers. Psalm 67, verse 5. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield her increase. Now, whenever you give God praises, worship, increase is mandatory. You can't worship God and be reduced. It, except you didn't do it well. So that's why I want to teach the protocol of worship. Because many of you, are, you, you think you are worshiping and you wonder why the benefits are not manifesting. There is a protocol for worship to be validated. Worship breaks limitation. You can't be a worshiper and be limited. It's not possible. It breaks the yoke of limitation, stagnation. Of course, you can see the history of Paul and Silas who though they were in prison and limited in the prison, when they began to praise God, the limitation was scattered to pieces. 
If you are a genuine worshiper, you cannot be caged. When I hear a man of God say, I was told that the enemy put me in prison. I don't know what you are saying. Worship activates the prophetic. You cannot be an effective prophet if you are not a worshiper. Even when the apostles had nothing to praise or thank God for. Because after the ascension of Jesus, they faced persecution. They only were hiding. They had no audacity to pray publicly. They were hiding in one room. Even with the Holy Ghost. They spoke in tongues. They were baptized. Yeah, they were hiding. But when they began to minister unto the Lord, in Acts 13, verse 1 and 2, I won't read. As they began to minister unto the Lord, that means worshiping him, the Holy Ghost spoke. When you don't hear God, it means you are not a worshiper. I'm not saying you are not praising God or you are not thanking God, but I say you are not a worshiper. Worship is the conclusive part of the journey that started with thanksgiving. It's the end. It doesn't matter how many hours you spend as a married man relating with your wife sexually. It doesn't matter how many times you are doing the physical exercise until you arrive at a plateau. It's called orgasm. To the woman, you are doing PE. You have been doing physical education. You have been doing what? Physical education. To the woman, you have not done anything until you take her to a level called orgasm. It's a play too of satisfaction that climaxes the exercise you have been doing since. When a woman gets there, we call you a husband. Many women have left their marriage and went to look for the boyfriend who took them to that play too because their husband does not have the capacity to take them there. Many have broken their mind. A, 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 a minister met me and said, we are, we are, I have a child. I said, from this woman, he said, yes, but I'm not the owner, sir. How many? The lady traveled to South Africa and registered for a, for a course just because she wanted to go and see a boyfriend that took her there before. Because the husband is just pumping. That is not sex. Sex is ability to take your wife to that place. So when you are busy dancing and praising God and thanking God, when you have not taken divinity to a climax of worship, you are doing exercise. Because intimacy is an intercourse with divinity. <sighs> Blessed are the eyes and the ears that hear what you are hearing. It's not how many hours you spend thanking God. It's not how many hours you spend praising God. Those ones, their activity to help you to arrive at the Holy of Holies. So if all your praising, all your thanking cannot take you there, it was a wasted activity. to put an end to a battle that your losing was inevitable. There's no way you would not have lost in this battle. But worship has the capacity to turn it around for your victory. If you are a worshiper, you can't lose any spiritual battle. 
It's not possible. Except you don't know how to worship. That's why I'm concerned about teaching the protocol of worship. What did the devil do that gave him all the power he had? That up to it now, even after his defeat by Jesus, he is still operating power. How come about that undeniable capacity? Worshiping. The devil does not have the vocabulary of thanksgiving. You know why? He cannot know what God did for him because there is nothing God did. He has no knowledge. God didn't buy him a car. God did not give him a child. So what you thank God for? The devil did not have it. But worship is beyond thanksgiving. Worship is beyond praises. We thank God for who for what he has done. We praise him for what he can do. But we worship him for who he is. Mm. Write it down. So you, you know what you are doing and why you are doing what you are doing. Thanksgiving is an appreciation of identifiable activity of divinity. Thanksgiving is an appreciation of an identifiable activity of divinity in your life. So the extent to which you can thank God is dependent on the extent to which you can remember what God has done for you. Thanksgiving has value because it's called the key. It opens the door. I will enter his gate with thanksgiving. That's why you don't begin with worship. You end with worship. You don't begin with worship. You begin with thanksgiving. And praises. These are the things you do that warms you up. So therefore, I can go on. I'm sure I will forward you some of the documented benefits of praises. Thanksgiving. Look at I can't finish all. I, I, I'm, I'm rushing to teach the main thing called the jealousy of God. The Bible said when somewhere the prophet, he wasn't a prayer warrior, he was a worshiper because he was born in the very presence of God, pregnant there, he was nurtured there, he was mentored in his presence because they put somewhere before the ark of God. He slept before his presence. So he doesn't know praises. He doesn't know thanksgiving. He only knows his presence. He knows God for who he is. So it is who God is that motivates his worship. Bible said, when he was giving burnt offering, burnt offering is a prototype of the Old Testament that is, a, that is worship in the New Testament. Burnt offering is not like other offering that you do and people will share it and eat the meat in the synagogue. Burnt offering, the animal is put on the fire, allowed to roast and the smoke goes to the nose of God. Only God, then the chopper. If you chop burnt offering, you will be burnt as an offering. And there is only one thing That is due God. Not thanksgiving. I can thank you because your SMS you sent to me always makes me glad. I'm always happy when I see your SMS. Thank you. So you can thank anybody. You can praise anybody for what you know they can do. Their worship belongs only to divinity. Only gods take worship. God's take worship. What is the so I, I, I told that time will not permit to go into the benefit of worship. No, it's too much. 
I will forward you for all those who registered. I, ho I hope you wrote down your WhatsApp number. I will transfer it to your WhatsApp so that you will study it so that you will be happy. So when you are doing it, you will know the benefit that will happen because, because if you are doing anything, you don't know the benefit. You don't do it by faith. You do it religiously. But when you know the benefit of what you are doing, you do it with faith. You know why the food you are eating is not blessing you? Because you are eating not understanding what you are eating. We grew up eating eba. We don't know what is eba. It was when we entered secondary school, we were told that eba contains carbohydrate. We were eating beans because it will sustain us from being hungry quickly. So they gave us beans and, and yam. So I will not be quickly hungry. But it was when we entered secondary school, we were not told that beans contain protein. That we need it. So we were just eating food, not knowing why we are eating. So it was not beneficial. But when your eye opened to know why you are eating what you are eating, you eat it with faith. The first salad I ate was in a place near Lagos. What do they call that place again? Idiroko. Many years ago. So I was invited there by pastor, CPN pastor. So they wanted to honor me because they were calling me demon chaser. When I appeared in their church, demons began to run without my ministration. My wife went with me. There was a, a mad person that entered the hall. No usher could hold him. And they, they threw them off. And he was coming towards me. Say, hey, hey, they were afraid for me. I said, leave that person. And as he came and came and as he came there, he stopped. He looked, he turned and ran out of the church. He said, that man is a demon. I don't need to pursue demon. They should pursue them. No, no, they saw power many years ago. It's not today I started preaching for 48 years. I'm not a small boy in ministry. So, no, it is long. So, no. So the, the way they saw the glory of what God did, they said they have to honor me. And they cooked salad for me to honor me. I, my, now, I won't go further. My wife will tell you the remaining story. <laughs> now, because it was a food for honor, I pretended as if I know the meaning of salad. This is more than 30 years ago. So I sat down like a big man that they called me. I didn't want to refuse the name they called me. So, when I chewed the first grass, my father, who told me to chew it, he made, whoa, whoa, whoa. I said, I said, mm. Mm. I said, mm. I, excuse me. I left the table, I looked for somewhere to vomit. I vomited the one I ate and the one I ate before. Even the one I ate in Bini, I vomited all out. Not because I don't know what they gave me. But now I know better. Our main food in UK is not eba. It's salad. I'm not chopping it knowing that I know the ingredients inside. My wife looked at me two few days ago. He said, now nah, my husband, they eat grass like this. So I they put her for mouth. I they chopped it in. Because I discovered that there's something inside. Until you know the benefit of praise and worship, you will not do it well. So I won't go further. I will send the message to you. Will that be okay? But what is important now is the protocol. The first one is that worship does not begin in the Holy of Holies. Is started by quality thanksgiving. You thank God. If you cannot appreciate what you can see, then you will not be able to appreciate what you cannot see. Use your mind to search for it. Thank him. You remember one, thank him. Remember two, thank him. Remember three, thank him. You know that was said in the book of Isaiah 45 verse 5. He said, I am the Lord that guided thee when you have not known me. 
So my doings in your life did not start when you gave your life to me. Before you gave your life to me, I have been taking care of you, protecting you, delivering you from crisis. Evil that would have, witches did not start today. They have been holding meeting in your father's house before you were born. But they, God kept you when you have not even known him. He said, I am the Lord that I went to check the meaning of God for guide. And the Greek Bible said it means I protected you when you have not known me. I provided for you when you have not known me. I healed you when you have not known me. You called upon me when you are not my child and I answered you when you have not known me. I prevented experiences that would have defeated your destiny even though you have not known me. I'm not just beginning to help you. I began a long time ago. Search for the doings of God. Find out from where you grew up. About five million spent competed for your arrival. Five million spent like you competed for your arrival. Your pregnancy was because the Lord supported you to defeat the 490. And you won the remaining four million plus spermatozoa. Out of about five million, how can you be the one that was pregnant? If not that heaven supported you. He guided you before you even knew him. I am the Lord and there is none else. There is no God beside me. Mm -mm. I guided thee. Though thou hast not known me. Even though you have not known me, I took care of you. I remember I, I grew up in a witch, zag, wizardry home. Terrible. It was a kofu. A woman entered my father's house. My father was very fantastic as a sanitary inspector in various places, in the villages. So they want to honor my father. So they said they have to do juju for him because they don't know what to give him. They don't have money. My father was so good to them. So they gave my father juju as a gift. And the juju is supposed to prevent any witch from staying in the house. No witch can stay. That's the gift they gave my father. So my father was enjoying peace until the woman entered his life. And when the woman entered the, the house, my father, the woman began to say, Daddy, oh, you love you, you want me to love you? He said, yes. This thing is not making me to have rest of mind. It's still the good there. It's gift. My father, because my father loved, loved her so much. I pray for you. He said, love is blind. But the love that will blind you may, may it not happen to you. My father was blinded to the gift they gave her. A whole village gave her, him that gift. And one person came and said, throw it away. My father used his hand to throw it. My father told me this story by himself. He's dead now. He's, he's, he's watching me. Melody threw that thing away. That witch became the ruler of the house. He, there was a night she took some blade to come and put mark on our body. Horrifying us. My father had to call my mother. This woman, you want, you want to die? He said, no, what is it? There's war. What's that? He said, these two children you born for me, you want to lose the two of them? He said, no, pack your load. Run for your dear life. My father told my mother to run. Have I given my life to Christ then? I guided thee when you have not known me. They took us to go and hide with another Juju woman who is a loga, is the name of the Juju. Is a loga. In case you don't understand the meaning, you can write it down like that. <laughs> so, we are there along the line. My senior brother was shouting. The cloth, mama, the cloth you used to cover us is heavy. Ah. Uh, my mother said, oh, what is wrong with you? I carry you from beneath, brought you to this place. In what you are still complaining, what is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? In anger, my mother took the wrapper and snatched it away from two of us that were lying down. Walking, 
For his guidance. But what qualified you when you have not known him? <laughs> worship. The protocol of worship. Worship begins by gratitude. If you are not grateful enough, your worship will not start. You know, intimacy with God is intercourse with divinity. Many are guilty. Many men are guilty here because they are caterpillar in their marriage. Old Testament analog. They have sex when they feel like it. Not considering the pleasure of their, of their spouse. <clears throat> Honey, uh, uh, after food, we will do something. Yeah, now. How many days now we don't do marriage? I'm a man. I, I can't be more than that. After food, oh yeah. Where will you lie down? <laughs> I don't know what is wrong with you. You don't worship God like that. It begins with appreciation. You must be tender in communicating to that woman the benefits she brought into your life. That without her coming to your life, you would not have been where you are now. You've got to communicate some pleasantries. You've got to look at her and let her know you love her. You've got to kiss her. You've got to touch her. Many, even their hand is Bible. They, can't, they don't know how to touch woman. Learn how to touch. Learn how to look at her. There is a spot in the eye of a woman is the black one. Learn to look straight and let communication of love hit each other. The spot. It's an ignition spot. If there's a click, if there's a click in that place and your trouser is not expanded by reason of the click, then something should be wrong. You better go for a medical checkup because the way God did it, that's why prostitutes catch men by looking straight at them. When they look straight at them, it is to cause a click. When the click happens and they blink their eye, I'm wet. They are taking you away. They are taking you away. Do it with your wife. Love your wife to such a dimension that she will miss you when you are not around. God didn't tell the woman to love the husband. He said, man, love your wife. Many don't know how to embrace their wives. I don't know when last you embraced her. When you embrace her, now she's suspecting you because uh -huh, you don't come now because you want to do something. And the night they hold me now. You see, make it your culture that she will not begin to see that you are a communicator of love. Your wife went out with scattered hair. And came back with a well packaged hair. And then you look, you didn't see anything. Now you have a problem. 
Women love appreciation. Let me let you know the reason why women dress up is because of a man. And they will not be satisfied by the dressing until there is a commendation. Until you say something about that thing they put on, they are not satisfied. It's their nature. They were packaged and brought up like that. You can see, as God brought Eve to Adam, he looked at her and said, wow, this is the bone of my bone. And the flesh of my flesh. It means you fit me well, well. That's the meaning. You fit me. It means no other person can fit me like you. Hmm? A man when a bit talk for mouth. You know if it marry. You not learn how to talk. That's why area boys without money can snatch a manager's wife. Manager have the money. The wife will go steal the manager's money to dash the area boy. What the area boy? Women are not looking for your money. They are looking for love. It's not money. Love. Play love. So pastor, pastor, we are at ministers conference. Many ministers' marriage are broken because they didn't teach this thing. Learn how to love your wife. I told him in my church for those who are, who, are, who are betracking me, my wife is here now. You can ask her. She came from outside one day and uh, suddenly came to where I was sitting down. Now, what well, if you know we? Something that was lost. And she now found that it was under my chair that the thing uh, slipped to. So she was, she was looking for it and I was also looking. I now joined her because I love her. So I now joined her to be looking for the thing. The slap she gave me that day, even in heaven, I will remember. <laughs> Swag bear. Am I looking for something? This hair, now they show you. I pass, you not see him. I pass, you not see him. I go take something. Not be say I want to take something. Now because of you, I go take something. I, I, I pass, you know, see him. Then I stay there. If like I say they look something, make you for see him, you know, see him. Now I can't show you. See, I even they show you, you remove your eye, you they look for something. Waiting loss. Waiting loss. Waiting loss. Learn how to love your wife. Otherwise, someone else will be sleeping with your wife. Women are looking for love. Hold her waist and walk with her. Hold her hand. They like touch. Once in a while, eat together. As you cut the food, make it cut. You put on my look out. Well, I see the swallow, you swallow out. Something will click. Learn how to love your wife. Why am I saying this? There are many anointed generals who died because they lost their wife another man. God's general documented a minister highly anointed doing work for the master traveling up and down, healing the sick, raising the dead. Only to come one day and the wife was crying. What happened? He said, your assistant pastor slept with me. Your assistant pastor. The man fell down, cried. He said, you have, no, you have not been staying at home. And I was high. And I didn't see anyone to bring me low. And then suddenly, your assistant pastor came. And he brought me low. 
The man went out and drank. He drank beer to, to cool himself down. He drank and drank and died in the beer parlor. Documented. Documented. It's written in the book. God's generous. You will, you will not end like that. Make loving your wife a project. Call her on phone. Let her know. You're not, I'm, not, baby, I'm just calling just to let you know I love you. I don't know how to say it, but let this call communicate it to you. I love you, baby. Off it. Go and look at the women who work in Ministry of Education when their husband phoned them. Just, just take the, the video. After their husband finished phoning them. <laughs> My, my husband just phoned me. You know, they let me rest. Too. And I just, they, just they phoned me. My husband. Not, women are happy to share the fact that their husband is always phoning them. Thank you. Am I right? Yes, sir. Correct. Go on, ask women. They are happy when they, they are, when you leave home. Many leave home till you come back. No man. What is wrong with you? Until you come back, not a phone call. It doesn't take more than one minute. The work has consumed your love for. See, before your assignment is your wife first. Look at the order. God, that is your personal intimacy in your closet. You don't, you don't, you don't compromise that. Two, family. That begins with your wife. Three. Ministry. Ministry is three, not two. Anyone who have allowed ministry to take him away from his wife will soon have an ugly story to tell. Do you know Benny He? Are you as, an, are you as anointed as Benny He? He almost lost his marriage. He publicly said it. He said he taught after God ministry. After ministry, my wife. He said, but now I have learned by experience. After God, my wife. May you not learn in a bad way. I pray for, I said, may you not learn in a bad way. Amen. May you not learn in a bad way. Amen. May you not learn in a bad way. Amen. Let me let you know, with all due respect to the women, there is no matured woman. Women are babies. They have no capacity to endure pressure. Put my lips. Women don't have capacity to do what? To endure pressure. If I put pressure on a woman, if I keep on putting pressure, putting pressure, a time she will submit, although she will cry because she didn't want to do it, but she doesn't have the capacity to resist persistent pressure. So don't give room for your wife to be under pressure because you will hear the other story. It's a matter of time. This lesson is for somebody here. Yes, sir. Take care of your home. He said, Hezekiah, you have done well. Everything is perfect. Ministerially perfect. But there's a problem. Put your house in order. Otherwise, you will not meet me if you die. Put your house in order. You are anointed and your marriage is not in order. You have not started ministry. Your church begins at home. Until you have perfected pastoring your, your family, then it qualifies you to pastor congregation. Hmm, mm -mm. When there is a holy distraction from administration, the message is for somebody. Those who have ears to hear, let them hear. The protocol of worship. Any worship that did not begin with thanksgiving is not worship. Then he moves further to praises. I said just now, what does thanksgiving do? Appreciation of identifiable benefits from God. So it means you must itemize it. Don't generalize it. 
the songwriter said, count your blessings, name them one by one. Begin to search for it one by one. I just mentioned two from my own just now. Uh -huh. Another protocol of worship. Is blindness to your immediate environment. And you do it physically by closing your eyes and then your mind by blocking your remembrance of other things. It means when you want to enter worship, you don't think of any other person. You don't think of any other person. You don't think of any other issue. That's why in your marriage, once it's 9 p.m., all handsets should be switched off so that you can concentrate on your wife. Switch off your handset so that there can be proper worship. Handset is a distraction on the family bed. Make it a discipline. You are being with the whole world from morning to night. It's enough. Give your home one hour. Not as you are talking. <laughs> Honey, yeah, I'm hearing you. I'm hearing you. No, you are not hearing her. That's a lie. We may want undivided attention when they are communicating. So the same with God. When you want to worship God, remove your mind from your problem. Remove your mind from issues that trouble you. If you worship God well, he will handle it. Remove your mind from any other human being. They are not necessary. blindness to every other person and every other issue. Blindness to every other person and every other issue. Blindness to every other person and every other issue. Can I hear loud amen? amen? Of course, I told you just now that is the meaning in the tabernacle to show how to worship God. And you've, of course, you know, when the, whole, when the high priest enter that dimension, they have an encounter with God once a year. But today, we are privileged to have an encounter anytime you are able to organize yourself and fulfill the protocol of worship. You will encounter divinity. By the grace of God, I don't know so much about other men of God, but from their stories, outstanding men of God, from their story on television, TV, I found that they encountered God scarcely from their story. They, they remember 1904 when, they, when, when God visited them. So it's, it's not frequent. And that one just made them to enter another dimension. But I encounter God every time. Jesus has visited me, not in a dream, physically. More than four times, no, more than three times, we discussed about the kingdom. The first time he came was because of the book I wrote, Christ Generation. When we get to heaven, you will know the truth. Whether you believe me or not, that's your business. Many times, I was worried before when somebody sent me an SMS, say it's a lie. So I was disturbed. And then God told me, why are you allowing to disturb me? Can you imagine what the whole world is calling me? I don't mind them. I'm still God. What you call me does not remove me from being God. You are on your own. When you enter hellfire, you will remember that you were talking against a man sent by God. Which it concerns you with me. Face your business. You are wasting your time on that man's destiny.
On the second location in my life that I was worried, the Lord spoke to me. He said, listen, my son, what people say about you does not matter. Because in the football pitch, many carry whistle to the football pitch. They blow, pew, pew. He said, there is no whistle that matters except that of the referee. I'm the referee of your destiny. I'm the one that blows. So what they are blowing, it has no relevance. So that's what, you see, before you enter a dimension of high level ministration, you must be able to conquer your mind as regards people's opinion. Did they not call Jesus Christ that he was possessed? Not that he did anything or he committed sin. They say he was possessed with a demon. Divinity was called possessed. That's the highest insult. You must learn to outgrow people's opinion. What did I say? Learn to outgrow people's opinion. Their opinion does not count. Let them blow whistle 1,000 times. Only one whistle blower is in the field. And who has that whistle? God. You are wasting your time looking for my mistake. You will become a mistake yourself. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When you are criticizing a man, the more you criticize him, the more he's going up. And you are stagnated. Whereas you need this man to bless you. You need the grace of God in his life to help you. And you are criticizing a man that has your solution. And the more you speak against him, the more God is lifting him up. <laughs> Does that not give you common sense? You spoke against me. Somebody dashed me jeep. About 20 million jeep. You spoke against me. And they sent me to UK. You who is speaking against me, you are still in your village. You are holier than me. I entered the UK, not up to three months. They documented my stay and my wife, permanent residence. It doesn't happen anywhere. It doesn't happen anywhere. You need months, years. Three months documented. They even asked me now to come and be taking pension. The country I work for, they didn't give me pension. UK, I didn't work. I'm now receiving pension. So what you say does not matter to me. You are wasting your life. I don't need your opinion to be happy. People are looking for people's opinion to be happy. You are a fool. You are a baby. If you are looking for people's opinion to be happy. In our kingdom, we get it from his presence. For in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. Hallelujah. Celebrate God here. Woo. Hallelujah. Until you grow above people's opinion, God will not lift you up. They say, they say, they say, they say. You were talking against me when I was a pastor. All the talk you talk. The bishop I said I won't take 20 years ago. They forced him upon me. So you're talking against me, promoted me. Now, what you see? Those who talk against people, they have lost their focus. They don't know what to do. They have lost, they don't, they are confused. Because if your job fool your hand, you don't go get hand ticket. They, they, they send SMS to intimidate people. So, no, you won't have time. If you, if, you, if you get job do, you are a wasted life. So you are trying to talk, look for who. And you know the funny thing? The, the devil is always 
using them to look for any person God is raising up. Some people will get mouth, talk against Adeboye, a man who is, who is an institution. You, you never rise, go anywhere. You say you'll be a young pastor. Say they don't know anything. Nothing should be wrong with you. Even the mistakes of a father can be a blessing to his son. My mistake. That's the grace fathers carry. And learn to respect those that God have lifted up. Praise the Lord. The protocol of worship. What's the first one? Begins with what? Thanksgiving and praises. What that says is thanksgiving, appreciation of identified blessings from God. What's praises? Thanking God for identified capacity. You identified the ability of God. You thank him. You praise him. But what is worship? Worship is, you worship God for what? For who he is. On that protocol of worship, is close your eyes, physically and spiritually, against your environment of association. Be blind to issues and people. Concentrate on the one you are worshiping. On that protocol, of worship. Meditative singing. I didn't say singing. You sang when you were thanking him. You sang when you were praising him. But I'm talking about meditating. You are meditating on him then it was provoked. Look at the song. Oh Lord my God. I didn't say sing with me. I'm teaching. When I in awesome wonder. You must be a wanderer. Somebody that wonders at the magnanimity of God. This God who he is. Considering all the works that the hands have made. I'm considering this creator, all that he created. I see that star. Are you seeing the star? It's a meditation. And I hear the rolling thunder. Are you hearing it now? No, you are meditating on when the thunder struck. You concluded. Thy power through all the universe display. The songwriter now said, after considering who you are, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art. How Now, what is the other protocol? Meditative worship. Meditative singing. That's the third one. The, third, the fourth protocol of worship. Is bowing down for him. It's very strange in the church today 
we are too casual about worship. Worship that is not embellished, concluded by bowing down. It's not complete. I will, I will show you scripture. When I came just now, I saw one, two, three people bowing down. The highest respect posture you can give to God to express your worship is kneeling down and bowing down. Without it, you still worship God, who, but with it is climaxed. Let me go to scripture. Let, let, let's learn from the devil. Let's learn from the devil. If you want to learn worship, I think the devil should be the best person to learn from. He, because he's a master, he did it all through, and he, he graduated, and he was clothed in glory. There was evidence of his worship. He up to today, we can see the sign of what worship brought to him. He had access to everything that God had, in quote. That is why you see a genuine prophet, you see a false prophet. You see a genuine miracle worker, you see a false miracle worker. You see a genuine teacher, you see a fake teacher. Anything God does, the devil has the duplicate. How did he get it? By worship. That's what God is telling us. As you behold him, looking at who he is, you are transformed to who he is. From glory to glory. Every day, Search for who God is in the Bible. Have a book where you write the God you discovered. Next year, you will bring the book to this conference. Let me count how many God, uh, the names of God that you have been able to write down. Bishop, do you know how I determine the maturity of somebody. Huh? I want to check your maturity now. I will give you the microphone to pray. Prayer reveals your level of maturity. How? Not the vocabulary, not the intelligent definition, not the smooth English, but the description of God shows you know him. Every person is saying the same thing. Does it not surprise you? God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient, lily of the valley, the bright and the morning star. The, uh -huh, in, in Jesus' name, amen. Before you, the same thing. The, what you said 10 years ago is the same phrase you are still using to describe God before you start praying. It means you are as old as what you were 10 years ago. You are not growing. Your growth is detected in your communication of divinity in the place of prayer. Check how you pray. Check how you define God. What is prayer? Relating with God. And relation makes you know God. So, so, when you, so what you tell me about this God now, it shows you don't know God. You have not been relating with him. The same definition, Alpha and Omega, since 10 years ago. I said pray, just give me, pray. When you want to pray, you begin with God. Now every person, just watch, watch, give the microphone to 10 people, they will say the same thing. They're not growing. You don't know God. Say, they that know their God shall be strong and they shall do exploit. Please, I beg you, begin to form the encyclopedia of the God you discovered. Every day, write down God. This morning, I have studied. Even though I'm the one that wrote the believer's daily meditation, I studied, I studied as if I'm not the one who wrote it. And I discovered who God is today. The God that giveth the increase. And it affected my prayer just now. It is the God you know that increases you. If your staying with God do not increase your vocabulary of God, you, you don't know him. Well, I that the God that guided me when I have not known him. It is when in my study of the Bible, I'm accumulating who God is to me. My prayer vocabulary will reveal my knowledge of God. Check the way you are praying and how you introduce God. 
The same thing you said 10 years ago is what is still in your mouth. You are not growing. The same vocabulary of God's description, what you used 10 years ago is what you are still using now. When they say pray, you don't have a new one because you don't know God. But I hope that this conference will change somebody. That next time you have opportunity of praying, your definition of God revealing who you are talking to must be so different from those who are listening to your prayer that they will know you are not a baby. What is the fourth protocol of worship? Bow down and worship. Let me give you some scripture. Matthew 4, verse 8 and 9. Now, this is the order of worship. But the Muslims have stolen it from us. Every Muslim have a wrapper, a mat, mat. They carry everywhere. So that the dust or the mud in any area will not prevent them from buying down to worship. They cut the revelation. And we are supposed to be the custodian of buying down and worshiping God. But they stole it from us. Five times a day, they bow down. There's a misery about buying down. I pray one of the adjustments that will come upon you by attending this conference is that you will begin to add bowing down to worship God, to your worship. Can I hear the loudest? Amen. Amen. Verse 8. Again, the devil took him up into an exceeding high mountain. The devil took him and took him to a high mountain. And showed him all the kingdoms of the world. He showed him all the kingdoms of the world. And the glory of them. And he showed him the glory. Now you can see, the way you can assess glory is through worship. We spoke about that yesterday. The devil said, this glory you came to look for. I am the custodian. Only gods are worshipped. That's why God is jealously guiding that buying down, kneeling down, buying down, must not be done to any other graven image. It's the only one you should do it to. There's a misery behind it. The devil knew. And look at what he's telling Jesus to do. Why will he ask Jesus to bow down? In recognition that he is the God of the world. Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 and 4. If our gospel be hid, it's only hid to those whom the God of this world have blinded their mind. Even the Bible recognized the devil as what? The God of this world. Because he took it from Adam. Only God should be worshipped. So that you bow down before God, you are saying you are the only God. There's no other God. See what he said. Go ahead. And said unto him. And said unto him. All these things will I give thee. I will give you all these things. If thou wilt fall down Hold and on. worship me. Hold on. <laughs> I know you can stand to worship. It's also good, but that's not the conclusion. He said, you must fall down. He was telling Jesus, the only way you can take the glory which you know is my own now. You know I'm God. You are God in heaven. I'm God on earth. I took it from your son, Adam. So you must worship me. Bow down. So worship without bowing down is not concluded. I pray for you that the sickness that will make bowing down difficult will not rest on your body. Amen. Amen. Then that sickness stole something from you. That sickness stole something precious from you. I pray it again. The sickness that will make bowing down to worship God difficult, it will not rest on your body. Amen. amen. I'm going to pray it again five times because that amen is a struggling. That's if you have not called the revelation. The disease that will make bowing down to worship God difficult will not touch your body. Amen. 
I'll say it again two more times. The disease, arthritis, cancer, hypertension, whatever disease that we not allow bowing down, kneeling down before God and worshiping God, that we not allow you to do it. That disease is banished from your body. Amen. I give you one minute to be angry. Every disease that will not make it easy for me to bow down and worship God. I destroy you out of my bones. I destroy you out of my legs. I destroy you out of my waist. I destroy you out of my body. Any disease that will not allow me to bow down. I to bow down to worship God. I say today I destroy you out of my body in the name of Jesus Christ. I break that hole, that hole out of my body. Any sickness, oh God, I will not allow me, oh God, to worship you, Father. I destroy that sickness. I break that hole out of my body today in the name of Jesus. That sickness will not be found in my body. It will not be found in my body. It will not be found in my body, it will not be found in my body, any sickness that will make me, oh God, not to worship you, oh God, not to bow down and worship you. I said today, I command that the sickness be destroyed out of my body in the name of Jesus. You will not survive in my body. You will not exist in my body. You will not be found in my body. In the name of Jesus, I break your hold. I break your hold. I break your hold. I break your hold. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Moses was 80 years. He was able to climb the mountain and worship God. How old are you? 120 years, Moses was able to kneel down, fall flat on his face, and give God worship. How old are you? It's an indispensable part of worship. Even Jesus, the Son of God, was not exempted. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Bible says he fell flat on his face. He knelt down and fell flat on his face. Give me reverence to the one who sent him. If you are too big to kneel down, you are too big to be honored. It's an expression of humility. He that humbleth himself shall be exalted. When you are a Christian, you don't know how to kneel down before God, to bow down and reverence him in your private closet. If you are fortunate to have a beautiful ground like we have here in your church and you are still standing you cannot look you cannot take advantage of the beautiful floor you have to lie down before God to prostrate and say Lord you are worthy something is wrong with your heart there's pride hidden in your heart pride and undiscovered pride I've said it, any cloth that will prevent me from kneeling down is an idol. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Don't wear any cloth that will make it difficult for you to kneel down. Because you may not expect it, but a song will just come up in the church. That song will be caucasic. It's a temptation. To see whether you honor that cloth more than God. I know there were days when a song came up too fantastic. I wore white and white that day. When I look, I say, no, my, my cloth goes thin. That was, and I, I was, although I didn't worship, but I still worshipped. Just that it was not God I worshipped. I worshipped my cloth. Any cloth you wear that makes it difficult for you to prostrate before the God who gave you the cloth. That cloth is juju. Is what? Juju. And thou shalt not worship any other God. Worship. He said, bow down and worship me. I dedicate somebody here. May the spirit of bowing down to worship God follow you home in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. May the spirit of bowing down to worship God invade your prayer life in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. May the spirit of bowing down to worship God, invade your prayer life. Amen. 
Somebody say, I will bow down. I will bow down. Somebody say, I will bow down. I will bow down. Somebody say, I will bow down. I will bow down. Say it again like you mean, I will bow down. I will bow down. One more time, I will bow down. I will bow down. Do it for the last time. I will bow down. I will bow down. Revelation 22, verse 8 and 9. Say down why you take that reference. The protocol of worship. Revelations 22, verse 8 and 9. And I, John, saw these things. When I saw the revelation that the angel showed me, he wasn't sure whether it was an angel or God. The, 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 the magnificent appearance of the angel made John to think that this could be God revealing these things to me. And, and heard them. And when I heard and seen, I fell down to worship. Before I hold on. Follow my teaching, you will know my emphasis. Follow my teaching, you will know my emphasis. And when I saw him, what did I do? I fell down. <laughs> uh, any worship that did not force you down, no, it's not climaxed. Any worship that did not compel you to fall flat. <laughs> the pride in the heart that has eaten the glory from today's church must disappear from your life. Amen. The protocol of worship. Prostrating. Kneeling them before God. Learn how to do it. Since the Lord told me, my wife knows I changed. My prayer life changed. You know, and there's no day I don't do it three times. In the morning, I fall flat. In the afternoon, I look for opportunity to do it. Don't be like a Pharisee. When you see potter potter, you kneel down. You, you, uh, in the open feet there, when some food, you lie down and say, I'm worshiping God. You know, that's a hypocrite. Do it like you understand what I'm saying. I made them foresee me, say, I'm worshiping God now. No, 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 that's hypocrisy. Do it from your spirit. Do it with understanding. Do it knowing that you are doing to the Lord, not for people to see. Only prayer done in the secret is rewarded openly. So your worshiping God must be a kind of a secret issue. But you know in the church, in the public arena, that it's already a secret from the public. So when you worship God in the hall, it's not public. For the church, it's a secret tabernacle. Did you hear my, did you hear my explanation? All right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now you see, when he saw that angel, he fell down and worshipped. Go ahead. I fell down to worship to before worship. the feet uh -huh. of the angel, uh -huh. which showed me these things. That showed me these things. Then said he unto me, The angel told me, See thou do it not. See that thou doeth it not. For I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren, the prophets, and of them which keep the saying of this book, worship God. Worship God. What you are trying to do, kneel it down, bow it down, do it to God, not to man. Worship God. The protocol of worship is concluded in bowing down. The songwriter said in Psalm 95, look for it, my son. Say, we shall come before me and bow down and kneel before our God, our maker, for we are the sheep of his pasture. We kneel before that's how we worship him. Worship without bowing down to give him reverence is not completed. The church have lost it and the Muslims took it. You will recover your own. Amen. Yes, my son. Psalm Revelation 19. chapter 4. God was trying to teach John. And you can see I'm doing a whole message without looking at paper. No notebook, no message preparation. That's how you know the school of the spirit. God is trying to communicate something that is so urgent. He doesn't, he doesn't wait for preparation. Deliver it now. From verse 1, God said, John, come and see the order of worship. 
Because you were very close to me when I was alive. You were putting your head on my bosom. I will use that to rob you as the most loved, the most loved disciple. He was so close to Jesus. He said, no, sh stop that nonsense. Level don't change. Let me teach you how to do pure worship. Not take familiarity, kill yourself. That familiarity is destroying you. Listen now. They took him to heaven to come and see what, what worship is. Read for me, my son. Go ahead. After this, I looked. I looked. And behold, a door was opened in heaven. I declare today, may this encounter in this, in this conference open your heaven's door. Amen. Amen. Open your heaven's door. Amen. Amen. Open your heaven's door. 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 Amen. Amen. Go ahead, my son. And the first voice which I heard. He heard a voice. Was as it were of a trumpet. Like a trumpet. Talking with me. Which said, come up hither. Come up hither. I will mean? show the things which must be here after. I want to show you what will be happening thereafter. Go ahead. And immediately I was in the spirit. I was in the spirit. And behold, a throne was set in heaven. Continue. And one sat on the throne. Uh -huh. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper. Continue. And a sandy stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne. In sight like unto an emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seat I saw four and twenty elders sitting. Clothed in white raiment. And they had on their heads crown of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightning and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. That and is the last protocol of worship. Silence. We'll come to that. That one just now. But just have it in your mind. Go ahead. And in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast like a calf, and the third beast had a face as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the fourth beast had each of them six wings about him. All these animals is talking about now, is talking about supernatural capacity, stronger than your equal. He spoke about lion, the strongest animal. He spoke about eagle, the strongest bird. He spoke about animal, the bull, the strongest body carrier that can carry your load and he will not complain. He spoke about the man representing, represented you, the Adam he created that was supposed to be a superman. Ruling the whole, having dominion over everything. He now told John, look at the reason why they had the capacity more than their equal. If you want to have capacity more than your equal, see what they did. Go ahead. And they rest not day and night. And they rest not day and night. Saying, saying, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. No, no. They were just worshiping God, and capacity was delivered. I declare the capacity you need to be above your equal. May God deliver it to you as you start worshiping from today. Amen. I declare as you start a new dimension of worship. May the capacity that will make you excel your equal be delivered to you. Amen. Amen. As you begin to add value to your worship from today, the capacity that will make you excel your equal may be delivered to you. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, my son. And when those beasts gave glory and when honor, those beasts gave glory and honor, and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fell down. Hold on. Before him that sat 
on the throne. Four and twenty elders. What they do? Worship that does not involve your falling down. <laughs> it's not concluded. God took Joseph to come and see how it is done. He fell down and worshipped. In the book of Revelation chapter 1, he said, and when I saw him, I fell down as if I was dead. The height of worship is falling down before him. Let your worship grow to that level where it's easy, it's spontaneous, falling down before him. It was not God that told Joseph John to fall down. It was spontaneous. By the revelation of God he saw in the same Jesus he was playing with some few months ago. May God amplify your meditative capacity for you to be able to appreciate the magnanimity of divinity to the dimension where falling down before him will not be a problem to you. Amen. Let that amen sound louder. 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 Amen. The last act protocol of worship. Somebody say silence. Silence. Yeah. If you are worshiping and you don't know how to observe silence, you will not get his response. Many worship, worship, worship the end and God does not show up. What makes God to show up is your silence. Learn how to take worship to a dimension when you give room for silence. Practice it in your church. You will see the gift of prophecy will begin to be ignited. Impartation will be resting on your members. Or trust, God says the Lord will be coming in your church. Give room for God. Silence is giving God a chance to show up. Zechariah chapter 2 verse 13. Zechariah chapter 2 verse 13. Be silent. Oh, all flesh Simple. before the Lord. Be silent before the Lord. And there's a reason. What's the reason? For he is raised up out of his holy habitation. He has raised up himself. He wants to do something, so keep quiet. Otherwise, he will not do anything. Silence ignites him to perform. The last protocol of worship is silence. There's going to be an examination during the night. This night, before I start ministration, you will write down in a piece of paper the protocol of worship with reference. What's the first one again? Every worship must begin with quality, thanksgiving, and praises. Second one, the third one, meditative. the fourth one, that's the fourth one, the fifth one, silence. silence. Look at your paper again. You know, we are not preaching, we are teaching. And in teaching, there must be a response. A, feel, a feedback to assess the level of your understanding. The protocol 
of worship. What is the first one? Begins with what? Thanksgiving and praises. The second one? I, I, I'm not getting what you are saying. There's a confusion here. <laughs> Media department, help us with itemizing it. The third one? Meditative worship. Meditative singing. The fourth one? <laughs> no, you're not. The fifth one? Silence. Silence. Give me a frame of the second one so that all of us will say the same thing. I'm talking about the media department. Is uh, Asa Mota there? No, he's not there. Tenji, you are there. Do something. It must sink. You will soon cover your nose, too. And I will stand before you and look at your mouth. It's not be like any other conference. By the end of the conference, did you attend that conference? Yes. How was it? Man, 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 man. It was just, it was just too much. It was just too much, man. It was just. I don't know what. Is there any topic that is called man? Was there any topic that is too much here? No. They all have names. It means you don't know what you learned. You must be able to recap, reproduce what you learned. That means you understood what was taught. Number one, what is the, we, we, in this first half, we, we learned what we call the protocol of worship. There was an introductory teaching on the power of worship. It was not concluded, and it was a promise that he would send to us benefits of worship. But he went further and gave us one. The first protocol is that every worship begins with thanksgiving and praises. And we said we thank God for identifiable benefits. Two, we praise him for identified capacity of God. The third one is worship. And we worship him for what? For who he is. Now, the first protocol is that. Second one, it means you were not following Media Blindness. department, you are not following. Blindness to your immediate environment. Number two. Blindness to your immediate environment. Number three. Meditative singing. Number four. Bowing down before him. Number five. Silence. Now let me start from here. I'll give you one more minute. I'm standing in your front. You will soon cover your note. Look at your note now. They said, ever learning and never coming to knowledge. You are not like that. You are not like that. Please, you have, uh, let's get the snack and the water for everyone because I'm entering the second section immediately now. Are we ready now? The yes, not many. All right. Close your book. Rise up. What's our first topic today? What's our first topic today? No, not you. I've been saying, I want to see your mouth. I can't see your mouth there. I want to stay here. You, you sit down first. It's a serious matter. Did you not pay 3,000? Did you not register? It must not be in vain. You must take something home. Now, what is the first protocol of worship? All right.
But don't, don't, don't think I'm looking at this head. I'm my eyes looking at you. I'm knowing everyone that is talking and the one that is not talking. The second protocol of worship. Oh man, come. I didn't see your mouth. Uh, stay there. You need to see your mouth. The third protocol. Meditative singing. It means singing and you are thinking about God. Very good. The, the fourth one. Bow down and worship. The fifth one. Silent for what? Silence to hear his voice. There's a purpose for the silence. Silence to do what? To hear his voice. I, I didn't hear him. Ah, but come. You will join this people. Come. They got it. Let's celebrate them, please. Can you stand up, please? No, no, you stay in front. What is the topic of today? first lecture? What is the first protocol? The second one? It's as if he's talking small, small now. The third one? The fourth one? Why not to do what? The last one? Celebrate God, you got it. Okay, you can go on. Our first topic, rise on your feet, please. What's our first topic? Excuse me. Come. You didn't talk. Uh, come. Stay here. Let me see your mouth. What's, it? What's our topic again? On the first protocol? The second one, third one, the fourth one, and the last one. Come on, celebrate you all. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> okay, you are, you are right. The last one, look, look, not disappoint me. Oh. This, is, this is the last group. All right. I want you to shout it like you really know it. What's the topic of the first lecture? And what's the first protocol? Thanksgiving and praises. All right. Second one? Blindness to your immediate environment. Third one? Sit down first. Calm down, calm down. Because the weight is going, I don't want to end badly. Are you ready now? Okay, rise up again. What is the topic of today? The first protocol? Second one? The third one? The fourth one? The fifth one? They got it right! Somebody give a shot! This is conference. The second stage is prayer. Is what? Prayer. This conference must put upon you glory. Glory that drives away the shame of poverty. It means everyone that attends this conference must be richer than the way you are now. Before I see you next year, what you couldn't, what you don't have now that you are supposed to have you will have them. Amen. You are, to, you are to stand and pray as if you are the warrior that was newly appointed by God. Father, I declare, you are not asking God, you are making a decree. I decree that the impact, the impact of this conference upon my life shall be glory. The glory that will drive away Every identified poverty, every, every lack in my life, that before the next conference, I will have what I'm not having now. In the name of Jesus, 
In the name of Jesus. Let me hear you pray like a soldier. My God, this conference, oh God. My God, it will put on me, oh God. Glory, oh God. Glory, oh God. That will bring upon, oh God, my life, oh God. Things that we are not there before. In the name of Jesus. Look up and go ta 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 ta. Every good to ta 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 neke. Anything, oh God, that look like poverty, oh God. This conference, oh God, we put upon me, oh God. Glory that we drive them away. Glory that we drive away poverty. Glory. That we drive away poverty. In the name of Jesus. Let the yoke of poverty, O oh God, be broken, O oh God, from my life, O oh God. By the reason of this conference, I am a dead Christian. Jesus. Amen. Many of you here, you pray more than David the Boy. You even do deliverance. Healing more than him. But see, the weight he carries defines him a more successful minister than you. Money defines your achievement. You don't talk your achievement. Money explains it. If you look at the way for today, he doesn't preach again. No. He just tell you where God took him to. Listen to his message. His son, Junior David Epo, teaches more than him now. He organizes his teaching. But the Lord doesn't have time for that again. He will just tell you where God has taken him to. He just, that's his message now. People, he's always talking about his success, his achievement. He has arrived. So you now know, go and look for what I did to be like me. Now, so I won't preach it because I cannot exhaust it. Let me just tell you where I am. To challenge you to go and look for what brought me here. Word explains what you have been doing in the secret. Until success comes your way financially, no one knows what you have been doing in the secret. Until word shows up, it means your secret activity have not been validated. Look at what God said in Matthew 6. 6. He said, he's God who lives in the secret that rewards publicly those who praise in the secret. So, until you are rewarded publicly by success story, it means God has not accredited your secret prayer. Pray more. Money must speak on your behalf. Ah, oh, I declare this conference will Shut impose up upon you the needed glory that will drive away your poverty. Amen. Amen. I'm going to pray again three more times, three more times, three more times. I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus that the... This conference will impose upon you the needed glory that will drive away the observed poverty in your life. Amen. Amen. I said this conference will impart upon you glory that will drive away poverty out of your ministry. Amen. Amen. I said this conference will impose upon you glory that will drive away the observed poverty in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. The Thank next you. prayer you're going to pray. That this conference will impart you with glory. That will drive away powerlessness. Inability to demonstrate supernaturality. Inability to demonstrate supernaturality. Ah, is the cast here now? The cast. 
Docas. It's Docas. Somebody having the name Docas. Before I drop the microphone, I will call, I will call her again. Because I just got a signal that the angel that wants to help her over her crisis is already delivered by the Father. The angel is here. Please, everyone here now, before I see you next year, as you minister, angels will show up. Amen. Amen. My signature, what distinguishes me from other men of God, is this. So any person I do impartation for, must carry it. You are already having it, my son. Some of them show up on your ministry. Your wife told me. Where, where, where is uh, Stephen from Asaba? Come. Is your wife there? Come. Stay by him so that, so that he will not lie. I did the partition for him. I want to let you know that what you're about to carry tonight is not fake, it's real. You will see it. I don't need to pray for you twice. It's once. You can't. It's a grace given to my father. And when he told me about it, he doesn't need to struggle. My own is to do it and you take it by force. Whether you like it or not, they will follow you. Now, I didn't do it um, 10 times. Give me a microphone. What happened when I ministered to you by impartation? After that, he came to our church last year. He prayed for me and my wife. And um, after he left, while he was praying, the Lord ministered to my heart that what has been happening to him has started happening to me. And I saw three angels. You saw three angels? He said two will minister to adults. Two will while minister one will to adults. Only to children. One will minister to children. Yes, sir. And from that time, when I have a meeting, when I pray for people who are sick, when they are slain by the Spirit of God, they just fall down and I'll tell them the angel will attend to them now and they will see the angel They will working. see the angel. And it has been working like that. It has been working like that. Yes. Sometimes the angels will just will remove things from them and will tell them, get up, it's over. And the they just the angel up. will remove things from their body. Yes. And, and they will see the they angel. They will see the angel. Yes, sir. And they will tell them, get up, it is over. It's over, yes, sir. Madam, can you attest to what you say? Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. That happened once, sir. More than once, sir, about three times. That happened? Yes, sir. It's done. Your own will happen. Amen. Amen. Now, please, um, we don't fake here. You must carry, you see, what will distinguish you from other ministers is that you were impacted by Papa Osangai. And what, he, what he, he does is what you do. And I took it from Isaiah 8 verse 18. I and the children that the Lord has given unto me, we are made for signs and wonders. Thank you, God bless you. Now, listen, listen carefully. You must carry it. Before I see you next year, I must get a, a testimony from you that the, the impartation is working. Amen. 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 Celebrate them, please. God bless you. Because if I pray for you, I say, you are here. You are here. Get up. You may not believe because I'm the one that said it. But when God shows it to you, you don't doubt what you see. No, you don't doubt what you see. The days of powerlessness is over. Amen. You're going to tell God, this conference must impact me with the glory that will drive away the shame of powerlessness. That I minister and there's no result. That I pray and people are not healed. I pray people are not delivered. No! The, the, the glory I will get from this conference will chase away that error. In 
the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray like my somebody God, knows. This Lord, by oh God, the reason of we this pack me, oh God. I receive the glory of oh God that we take away with powerless powerlessness, oh God, from Don't my administration, oh God. In the name of Jesus, Jesus. that after this conference, I, I shall minister to people, oh God. Lord, my God, your glory. power will move in your life. Lord, Lord, I receive the I receive that glory of God in this conference today. I receive that glory. I receive that glory. I receive that glory. The glory of God that takes away of God. Powerlessness of God. I receive it. I receive it. Lord, in this conference of God, I receive that glory. In my ministration, Zakatai cannot go. I receive the the glory of God. I drive the way of God. Powerlessness of God. In the name of Jesus. Ratoshek. I receive that glory today. Of Jesus, Amen. Amen. You heard yesterday a pastor who attended the last year's conference. He said after the conference, he went home and began to call all the people he prayed before that did not work. He called them to come now. Come. He was confident that the impartation is not even. Now, many of you were impacted yesterday with breaking the yoke of barrenness, and you, you cannot go back to your church and be looking for those who are barren. <laughs> uh -uh. Boldness to declare that you know it enough. Anointing and impartation does not work until boldness is applied. That means you believe it and you are confident of it. You know what Elisha said? Naaman went to meet the king. That my, 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 my king said you should heal me of leprosy. Ah! Am I a God? Only God can, can heal pro, uh, leprosy. The prophet heard that the king tore his clothes. He said, hey, king, why must you tear your clothes? I'm here. Take, bring him here. Yes, and he will know there is a prophet in this land. This now, hold on. Hold on. He didn't say you will know there's a God. Who does not know there's a God? People don't know there's a prophet. They don't know you are anointed. They know, they don't know. But they will know after today. Amen. Uh, I tell you the truth, they will know. They will know. Someone said they will know. They will know. I want you to decree after today's impartation. People will know that I'm anointed. Open your mouth and make that prophetic decree. My God. After today's after impartation. Today, oh God, impartation. People will know I am anointed. After today's impartation. After this conference. People will know that I'm anointed. After today's conference. People will know. People will know. People will know. That I am anointed by God. That I am anointed by God. Let me know, O God. Yes, Lord, let me know, O God. Yes, Lord, let me know, O God. Of manifestation, O God. This is what know, O God. That I am anointed. In the name of Jesus. Rakota, ta, 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 ta. Oh my God, 
after this conference, before we know, oh God, that I am anointed, oh God, because of the grace I will carry in this conference, people will know, people will know, men will know that I am anointed, oh God. In the name of Jesus, in Kabosa, 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 in they will see the workings of God through my life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Look at me. Everything you need is not in heaven. It's in the hand of a man. That's what God does. He distributes it to man. You connect a man that your own is inside his life, lay hold on that man. After Elijah left the conference, Elijah's conference, as he was going back home, the Bible said, please, media, put it on the screen. Second Kings chapter 2, verse 15. Sit down and look at this scripture because you are going to use it to pray right now. Impartation of glory that will drive away the shame of powerlessness. Second Kings 2 verse 15. And when the sons of the prophets that were in the same school, the school of the prophet with Elisha, all of them attended this, the same school. They are born again. They are ministers ordained the same time. They are in the same town. Which were to view at Jericho. When they saw him, when they saw him, they, they said, the spirit of Elijah is resting upon Elijah. They, were, they knew it. They knew the signature of Elijah's doing. They saw the similar thing in Elijah. They knew it. I declare this the special features of God's doing in my life will be seen in your life. Amen. Amen. The special distinguishing features of my ministration will be seen in your life. Amen. Amen. When they saw him, they knew that this man is carrying the spirit of Elijah. They saw him. And that's not all. Put this reference there. And they came to meet him. Some pastors will so come and meet you. Amen. What did they do? And bowed themselves to the ground before him. They were classmates yesterday, but the conference separated them. May this conference separate you from your equal. Amen. Amen. I declare, may this conference separate you from your equal. Amen. May this conference separate you from your equal. Amen. May this conference separate you from your equal. Amen. May this conference separate you from your equal. Amen. I will say it five times. May this conference separate you from your equal. Amen. I will say it four times. May this conference separate you from your equal. Amen. I will say it three times. May this conference separate you from your equal. Amen. I will say it two times. May this conference separate you from your equal. Amen. I will say it one time. May this conference separate you from your equal. Amen. Now open your mouth and begin to decree. Ah, I can't come here in vain. No, but the reason of call. this encounter, let this conference but the reason of the separate me from this my equal, oh God. No, my God, God will be let this from conference, oh God, separate me from my equal, change. oh God. By the, the name end of, of this conference, Christ. oh God, Lord, let the difference be clear. Change. Let the difference be clear. Let the difference be clear. In the name of Jesus. Let me separate me. Let me separate me. By the encounter, oh God. My God. In this conference, oh God. Let, oh God. 
let it be clear by God. Let me separate me from my equals of God. Let me separate me from my equals of God. In the name of Jesus, my Rakopet Sato, I shall not be a Sasea. I will my God, let this conference of God separate me. Let it separate me. Let it separate me. Let it separate me. Let it separate me. By the reason of God, of the evidence of God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Of Jesus. Amen. The third glory that this conference will put on you is the glory that drives away the shame of character deficiency. It breaks the yoke of sin, bad habit, and redefine your discipline. You're going to take authority and decree. I didn't say beg God. I said make decree. I decree that this conference will impact me with glory, that we destroy bad character, that we destroy bad habit, that we destroy sin from my life. In the name of Jesus. In the name, name of, of Jesus. Jesus. Pray like somebody who is my a God. captain in those Let this conference, oh God. Pray, oh God. The yoke of the sin from my life, oh God. We receive, oh God. Let the glory, of God. That destroy, oh God, the yoke of sin. Oh my God, rest upon my life. In this conference, oh God. That we break the yoke of sin. Out of my life. By the end of this conference, oh God. The glory I will take, oh God. The glory that will rest upon me, oh God. We break the weight. Oh God, the yoke of sin, the yoke of bad character, we break away, oh God, every yoke of bad habits. Jesus, every bad mannerism, oh God, come to the God that does not glorify your name. Oh my God, let it be broken, oh God, from my life, oh God. Rakota kataka, by the reason of the glory, I will carry this conference, oh God. Let the yoke, oh God, oh my God, of bad character, oh God, of bad mannerism, oh God. But have me God, we broke the way from my life, oh God. In Taco Zika, in Riku Patamala, in Taka Panekota, in Rokote, I will begin to live the right life. I will begin to live the right life. My conduct with the right of God. My mannerism with the right of God. In the name of Jesus, let that glory rest upon my life. Let that glory rest the rest of the life, the glory that destroy, the yoke of sin, oh God, the glory that destroy, every bad man that is in my God, let it rest upon me today, let it rest upon me in this conference, in the name of Jesus, I receive it today, I receive that glory, I receive that glory, I receive that glory, the glory that drives away, oh God, but God, oh God, the glory that takes away, oh God, but I receive it, oh God, I receive that holiness. glory today. The glory of holy that glory today. I receive that glory today. I receive that glory today. I receive that glory today. In this conference, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, but man that is here, but God, oh God, is over. It's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. The life of our righteousness is over. It's over. It's over. It's over. Because I receive of God. I receive that glory to Jesus. Amen. The last impartation that this conference will put on you, it will remove the shame of congregational smallness. It means before I see you next year, your congregation must have grown. Amen. It means the people and the helpers that congregate around you will be increased. Amen. Put on the screen Proverbs 14, verse 28. Ah. Read for me, my son, if you have found it. In the multitude of people, 
in the multitude of people is the king's honor. Your glory is in the multitude that come around you. The smaller your congregation, the smaller your glory. By this conference, your church will grow. Amen. Amen. When you talk about great men of God, you talk about their congregational size. You don't have a small church and call yourself a general. There are some bishops that are being qu queried. Which kind of bishop? I go in church, now 15 members he gets. He say me bishop. What? They don't care the anointing you are calling. They want to see crowd around you. After my consecration, people began to send us overdue, overdue, overdue. Oh, you don't, you don't overdue. You don't overdue. Why? Because they saw evidence that are on ground that is not a new thing. You are overdue. You can't be a small man of God and say you are a man of God. The anointing gathers people around you that believe in what you carry. After this conference, God will draw crowd around your doing. Amen. After this conference, God will draw crowd around what you are doing. Amen. After this conference, God will draw crowd around what you are doing. Amen. We are going to pray and demand, not pray, demand, decree. This conference we put upon me impartation of glory that will destroy the smallness of my congregation, that will enlarge my coast, that will grow my, my attendance, that will make multitude to be coming around my ministration, that will make crowd to be revolving around my doing. In the name of Jesus, in the name of I Jesus. I say in the name of Jesus. 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 Open your mouth and pray. My God. Lord, this conference of God. We put up the your God. Of the, the glory of God. This conference. The partition of God that we I receive God. the glory. For expansion. Increase of God. I receive glory for increase. In the name of Jesus. May the glory of increase. May the glory of expansion. This word is smallness. In the size of my congregation. In the name of Jesus. My God. Let your smallness of God. Let them be increased. Let them be increased. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Because I am God. Oh Lord. Oh my God. God, the grace for increase of God, the grace for increase of God, the grace for increase of God. Lord, let me carry grace that we are men and women from the south, from the west, from the north, from the north, from the north, from the north, from the You are going to pray. Every spirit of smallness, what are you doing in my life? I'm a candidate of greatness. Pack your load. And go. go. You are going to do it militantly like a general who is not, we are not joking. I'm commanding you to pack your load because I'm a candidate of greatness. Kings don't operate in isolation, they operate in entourage. It is the multitude that gather around the king that defines his glory. I declare every spirit that negates my glorification as a king. That want to make me and define me small. Today, I bind you. I break your power. Amen. I send you out of my doing. Amen. I send you out of my doing. Amen. You are going to do it in a minute. You are anointed to cast out devil. Don't allow that anointing to waste. He said, this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. Every spirit, every devil that want to package you small and make you look small by the fact of the people that surround your performance, 
I chase you away. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and chase that devil away. Every power that wants to to look small. That wants to make you look small today. I bind your power today. I cast you out. In the name of Jesus. Every power of my goodness. Out of my way. I bind you. Out of my head. I cast you out. Rokaya. Rokaya. Out of my life. I break your hold. I cast you out. Out of my way. I cast you out. In the name of Jesus. I break your hold. Out of my head. I cast you out. Out of my way. I cast you out. Out of my head. I cast you out. I stop your I cast you out. I cast you out. I cast you out. I cast you out. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I cast you out. 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 I cast you Go in the name of Jesus. Your home. Pasuka Yaba. Your stay is over. Your stay is over. I overcome you. I break your power to I overcome you. I bind your power to the glory. I cast you out. The Lord Jesus. I show you out of my life. I show you out of my life. Every spirit of the Papa Second Delivery. I am a good boy today. I find your power today. I cast you out. I cast you out. I cast you out. In the name of Jesus. I cast you out. I cast you out. I cast you out. In the name of Jesus. I cast you out. I cast you out. I cast you out. In the name of Jesus. I cast you out. I cast you out. I cast you out. In the name of Jesus. I cast you out. I cast you out. I cast you out. In the name of Jesus. I cast you out. I cast you out. I cast you out. In the name of Jesus. I cast you out. I cast you out. I cast you out. In the name of Jesus. I cast you out. I cast you out. I cast you out. In the name of Jesus. I cast you out. I cast you out. I cast you out. In the name of Jesus. I cast you out. I cast you out. I cast you out. In the name of Jesus. I cast you out. I cast you out. I cast you out. In the name of Jesus. I cast you out. I cast you out. I cast you out. In the name of Jesus. I cast you out. I cast you out. I cast you out. In the name of I'm not saying steal another man's own. There are some that are made for you, but they are not with you now. People that are supposed to give expression to your status. They are not here, they are somewhere else. But after this conference, the breeze of destiny will blow them to you again. Amen. Open your mouth and, and, and recover them. My God. Oh. Every man, oh. every oh. woman, oh. every boy, oh. and every girl oh. that's supposed oh. to be with me to yeah, defy the greatness of God in my life, wherever you are, wherever you are, I recover you back. I call you. I call you today. I call you. 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 I I call you. 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 That are supposed to be with me. I call them out today. Oh, I call you to me. I call you to me. I call you to me. I call you back. 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 In the name of Jesus. Go for it. Go for it. Today. Go for it. I release you. Go for it. I call you back today. Go for it. I call you back. Go for it. I call you back. In the name of Jesus. I call you back. In the mighty name of Jesus, I call you. I call you back today. I call you for. I call you back today. I call you back. I call you for. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Those who had a reason to leave you, may God visit them with a reason to come back. Amen. Now there's a man in the Bible called Ananias, a prophet. That is a hidden prophet. He was supposed to be the one by destiny to recruit Paul into the ministry. But he had a reason to run away from Paul. That when God visited him, he gave God the reason. That I have a reason. That this man is a killer. This man is a murderer. This man is... Do he, he, he told God all he knew about the man. But God told him all he knew about him. And he was convinced and returned to Paul. For all those who had a reason to leave you, Jesus. may God, by divine encounter, ah. 
give them reason to relocate back to you. Amen. Amen. You are going to pray this. Oh God. Oh God, visit them. There are many the devil deceived. Many the devil deceived. Many free, flimsy excuses. Flimsy excuses. Ah, uh, People that came to you by divine arrangement. They left by flimsy but they are coming back by divine conviction. Amen. They are coming back by divine conviction. Amen. Open your mouth and say, God, by revelation. God. They are coming back by revelation. I pray for them today, Lord God. That God, Lord, everyone that left you by reason, they will return back by reason. My God, convince them. I pray, oh Lord, 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 give them a reason to return. My God, give them a reason to return. My God, convince them. Lord, convince them. Lord, give them a reason to return. My God, give them a reason to return. My God, give them a reason to return. My God, give a reason to return. My God, give them a reason to return. My God, give them a reason to return. My God, give a reason to return. My God, give a reason to return. My God, give Father. Convince the Lord. Lord. Convince the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You are going to take authority. Every evil hand of suppression that is laid on the hand of those who are now congregating with you to suppress them from the number. That no matter how many God brings in, by the magnitude of suppression, the addition becomes irrelevant. Not that God did not bring, but the suppression was too much to make the addition relevant. And on your people, on the good people around you, to pull them away by suppression. So that no matter what you do, people will not see the evidence of growth. That hand will wither. Amen. That hand will be cut off. Amen. Amen. You are going to cut off every evil hand. Laid on your helpers, laid on your assistants, laid on your members. Cut it off in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray. Every evil heart of subtraction, my God, that is laid on my helpers, helpers, that is laid on God for my neighbors. So, today, in the name of of Jesus, I cut off those. Jesus, I cut away such a way in the name hand. of Jesus. I cut Jesus. that things away. Every I cut away every evil hand of suppression that want to take a call. My soul must say, Well, look up. Oh, my father. I I cut away such hands. I cut away such hands. I cut away such hands from their life today. In the name of Jesus, they will not be taken away. They will not be taken away. They will not be taken away. Every head so God, I want to convince them, oh God. So go away. I cut 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 away such hands. From your life today, in the name of Jesus, they will not be taken away from me. 
They will not be taken away. They will not be taken away from me in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. 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 Thank you, May it increase your supernatural capacity. Amen. May it increase your level of holiness. Amen. May it increase the congregation that gather around you. Amen. May it increase your fame and popularity. Amen. May it increase your success story. Amen. In the name of God the Father. Amen. In the name of God the Son. Amen. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Somebody give a shout. Woo! If you brought your hands from home, celebrate the King of Glory. We are entering the conclusive part of this conference today. And take your water, take your snack. And I start teaching quickly. Because we don't want to exceed the documented time. Want it to be on record that in this conference 2022 we kept the time. We kept the time. The jealousy of God. We're going to look at it on the screen. I've given it to, to the media department. We are reading Exodus 34, verse 14. Exodus 34, verse 14. Exodus 34, verse 14. For thou shalt worship no other God. For the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous God. Thank you. Well read. Well read. What is the name of God? A jealous God. No, no, not the a jealous God is his activity. What is the name of God? He said that is his name. That is his name. Not what they call him. He told you his name. Man, no one knows the name of God. So he's telling you what he is. Although he's a jealous God by activity, but his real name, my jealousy. So call God. That, that's, he wants to let you know the seriousness of that identity he carries. In fact, this is the main teaching of this conference. Others came as school of the spirit. This is the main teaching. This is the one that's supposed to reframe your life, if you can understand it. If you cannot catch it, you didn't come to the conference. He said he is jealous, but that is his name. And I heard by whisper of the spirit. He said, most of the ugly experiences you have that you associate with the devil has been the effect of his jealousy. If you forget my name, don't forget this statement. That most of the contradictions you experience, most of the evil incidences that happen to you is a reaction from his jealousy. 
is not devil. For example, this, this is this man's wife. For example, sit down. Then this lady, after some few minutes, he will come to this man. The man will sit down. And she will sit down. After some few minutes, you come again. Hmm? Uh, the, wife, the wife is looking. I've been at the sister. Then the next day again, the conference started. She was here the first day. The second day now, she moved her seat and she sat where Bishop is. Now getting closer to the husband. And then when they are writing, they are looking at each other's notes. What do you write? No, 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 not you. No, no, I. Not you. No, 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 not you. The two of them are making one. He go get to the time. She start to not with Phoebe. He go carry, but he go knock her for her. When, when she, they come again, go, go to your seat. Go to your seat. That is what you call jealousy. She is so jealous that he hit her for her. God say, the headache will they get. Now he hit you for head. Not be devil. Because you are, you, are, you are into so many things taking my attention. So, come on, look me. Let me be your wife. Most of the hazard you pass through, they are not demonic. They are consequent upon the jealousy of divinity. Oh. Okay. Did you hear what I said? <laughs> Most of the blame you give to the devil. No, it's not devil. It's God trying to recover you. One year, when I have not known this, the Lord sent an evangelist from Lokoja evangelist of Bonaye to come and see me. And the Lord gave him a reference to give me. And the man does not even know the meaning of the reference. Psalm 32 verse 8. Please put it on the screen. Read for me. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shall go. Go on. I will guide thee with my eye. Continue. Be ye not as the horse uh -huh. or as the mole, uh -huh. which have no understanding, uh -huh. whose mouth must be heard in with bit and bridle, lest they come near unto thee. That, now that's King James' story. If you read from, from a translation, it said, even one man yet did not know why God gave him that reference. But God said, go and give to my son in Benin. So he traveled all the way from Lokoja to come and give me the reference. I said, what is the meaning? He said, no, no. But God asked him to give me. I read and read and read and read and read and I don't know the meaning. Until the Holy Ghost now interpreted it. That is a warning to me. That my intimacy must be sustained. That don't be like the horse who will not come to you except to tie the mouth and tie the nose and put rope through the nose. You try it. Put nose. Put rope through your nose. See how you will feel. If we hook it, we wound you. At times, blood will drop in their nose so that they can connect before they tie their mouth. No horse will come to you except you wound the horse. And God is telling me, my son, don't let me wound you before you come. Don't let me wound you to be able to have you with, with me. Don't let me wound you so that I can have you with me. Don't be like the horse that have no understanding. That I created you for intimacy. 
and you must not spend undue time with people at my expense. It took me two years to understand this reference. Most of the injury you have is not satanic. It's God trying to wound you to bring you close. I pray for somebody listening to me. May you begin to strengthen your intimacy and walk with God. May God not use injury, affliction to bring you close. Amen. May God not use affliction to bring you close. Amen. May God not use affliction to bring you close. Amen. May God not use accident to bring you close. Amen. Amen. Should God break your leg by accident to keep you in the orthopedic world just to prevent you from parabolating the town? Are you waiting for your leg to be broken? Then you better learn how to give God quality time because he's a jealous God. Don't spend more time with people than you spend with God. The jealousy of God. Mm -mm. <laughs> Let me explain to you so that you may know that it is the quality of time you spend with other things that makes God jealous. You go to James 4, verse 4 and 5. Be very careful about the time you spend for other things. Television, social media, handset, people. Compare it with the time you spend with God. Mm -mm -mm. Don't let God wound you because he will wound you because he loves your presence more than your comfort. I say it again. He loves your presence more than your comfort. I will say two more times. He loves your presence with him more than your comfort. So if injuring you will make you be in his presence, he will break your leg. Just to have you. Begin to calculate how much time you spend with God. You are a man of God, not a man of the people. So it means you are more with God than with people. There are 24 hours in a day. Remove 8 hours for sleep. How many hours remaining when you remove 8? 16. Calculate how many of that 16 you spend with God. You will see that you are cheating God. You spend more time with people and with things than with God. So all the evil you have been passing through is punishment for your unfaithfulness. Begin to reorganize your time. It's not about prayer, 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 prayer. There are times you just stay with God. You are not praying that you are in his presence. Just thinking of him. Not when you are praying, 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 praying. No, 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 no. I'm talking about just be in his presence. Just thinking of him. And you begin to download things into your spirit. Lock up, off your handset. This handset is a demo. If you don't control the usage, it will become your God. Verse 4. Verse 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses. Hold on. Why will God call you adulterer? Because he married you by Christ. He became the groom and you became the bride. He's your husband. Why will you spend more time with other things and other people compared with the time you spend with God? And do not call you adulterer. You are a prostitute. You are committing adultery. And go and find out what happens to adultery in the Bible. In the Old Testament, they are stoned to death. And you wonder, say, Pastor, say, eh? I don't know what happened to me. I was just, I was just uh, standing. I had boom, in my back. And ever since, I don't know what. No, you are being stoned. My God. Adulterers are stoned. Most of the evil you are passing through, you say devil, devil. No, your adulterous life is what is activating the punishment. Don't forget who God is. Who is he? Jealous. 
He told you. So you are not ignorant. He's a jealous God. He named my jealousy. Mm -mm. Know ye not. Know ye not. That the friendship of the world. That friendship of the world. Is enmity with God. When you become too friendly with the world. You spend more time with the world than with God. You become an enemy of God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. When you are more friendly, when you spend more, friendship is defined by how much time you associate with the object of friendship. So when the time you spend with other things is more than the time you spend with God, it means you are in friendship with other things. Then you are now an enemy of God. Can you imagine what God will do to his enemies? That's what he's doing to you. Do so you most think of the problems we are passing through, they are consequent upon the jealousy of God. And he wants to explain to you the nature of jealousy. Songs of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 6. Set me as a seal upon thy heart. Now hold it. Set it what? As a seal upon, upon thy heart. God is talking to you. It means constantly meditate on God. Always meditate on the names. He calls himself the one you discovered in scripture. Consider it and meditate on him. Don't let your heart depart from who God is. He said, God will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. So battles will end just by keeping your mind on God, meditating on who he is. He said, set me as a seal upon your heart, which means unbreakable, glued to your heart. Your mind is always in the remembrance of who God is. Always remembering who he is. Ah! You think of him again. Ah! Omnipotent. God of Israel. Hmm. You remember how he delivered them from Egypt. Marcus Kayade. Always thinking of his doing. Set him up a seal. Go ahead. As a seal upon thy arm. Now, also as a seal upon thy arm. Arm is for activity. Arm is for performance. Arm is for doing. It means keep him in the consciousness of your mind while you are busy. Whoa. Set him as a seal in your arm. Which means as you carry on your daily activity. He didn't ask you to stop. No, don't resign. No. But while you are busy doing things, be conscious of his presence. For love is strong as death. For love is strong as death. What's the meaning of that? It means if you love him, something must die. If truly you love him, something must die. Your love and your passion for some other things, taking his time, must die. Your love for other things, making you not to love him properly, must die. Love kills. Love kills. Your love for God must kill your love for something else. Jealousy is cruel. Now, I want to explain to you now, who, what, how is jealousy? Is he said jealousy is what? Cruel. It's cruel. Hold That's... on, hold on. Think of it. When I told you just now that God will knock your head, God will shoot you with arrow, God will throw you stone. Somebody say, "Wait, can God do that?" That's why I read that scripture. Jealousy is what? Cruel. It's, cruel. it's not friendly. It's not friendly, it's cruel. It means God will be cruel to you if you don't relate with him properly. He wants association. 
He wants you to carry him along. Make him your friend. Let him take your time. Waste your time on God. Jealousy is as cruel. Go ahead. As the grave. Hold on. He defined how jealousy is cruel. As what? The grave. As the grave. No respect for 